Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm thankful today, and I know that everyone um, that is serving the Lord has a reason to be thankful. And I don't know about you, but I have known the blessings of God. I am serving the Lord. I'm doing my best, and I hope everybody else can say the same, that you're on your way to heaven, that you're serving the Lord, that you're doing everything you can to make sure not only that you go to heaven, but that you are growing in the Lord, that you are flourishing in the Lord, that you are becoming closer to the Lord, and that you are doing your best to try to take everybody that you know with you, to take them to heaven with you. That way, people don't have to experience firsthand what hell is really like. I'm trying to get my Bible all set up here so I can talk to you for just a minute, but I want you to think about um, that for a minute. How, when's the last time you actually put your self aside, your own selfish desires, and said, hey, I'm going to try to do my best to serve Jesus Christ, and I'm going to do my best to win souls for the Lord. Praise God, praise God. I don't know about you, but I am thankful today that we can serve God, and we can know that He is truly, truly everything that we ever need and everything that we will ever need in this lifetime in the next lifetime because he supplies all of our needs hallelujah did you hear what i just said he supplies every one of our needs i don't know about you but that that excites me that that does something in deep inside of me that stirs something inside of me to know that my god shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in christ jesus hallelujah i'm thankful for it today I've been having a little bit of trouble talking uh, because of my tooth and um, my insurance doesn't cover dental, so yeah, I'm going to have to have my drink here and hopefully um, I will get through this and be able to, you know, the main important thing is not that you see my face, not that you know who I am but that you know who Jesus is, that you know who the person I speak of is. That is the most important thing, and I can't emphasize that enough, because the focus has been on us too much, on the outside appearance, on the person standing behind the pulpit, not so much the person, what the person's saying and what their motive and intention are, or is, um... We should be more concerned about what they're talking about and what their, excuse me, what their um, motive is, whether it's to be seen or to be invisible. And that is so important nowadays because there are so many people that are trying to be corrupt. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular because I don't want to do that but uh, <laughs> but um there are a lot of people out there that are just trying to take advantage of the grace of god and they're trying to get rich off of the things of the lord trying to prey on people and their desire to serve god and it is disgusting and it is filth and we as christians have to be aware of these people serve the lord work out your own salvation do your best to try to make sure that your relationship with God flourishes. Praise the Lord. I want to read to you a scripture real quick, and I'm going to try to not preach too long. <laughs> I know, I know. <clears throat> I heard a bunch of people saying, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, Jesus said unto him, and I'm in Matthew 22 and verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. That is Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. And Lord, I pray that you would minister as I preach the gospel, Lord, that you would move and you would touch each and every person that hears this under the sound of my voice, Lord, that it would go forth and accomplish that which you want it to do, and that you would pour the horn of anointing oil over my head, Lord, in your precious and holy name.
Amen. You know, before I preach, I want to say, I've been doing this for a long time, preaching the gospel, and I consider it a great privilege, but I still get nervous. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I get nervous even when I get up there, because I don't want people to see me, I want people to see the person that's inside of me, the person that saved me, the person that took me from this wretched person of filled with sin and delivered me unto um, something so wonderful. I mean, I'm not talking about myself so much, but God took something that was so broken and made it new. And I, I, I'm so thankful for that. I want to talk to you today, and I want you to think about what are your motives? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with everything in you. The first and greatest commandment. Now, when we get down to pray, most of the time you hear people say, Lord, I haven't talked to you in a while. This will be the first time that we've talked in probably years, but I need your help. You know why? Because that's exactly it. They need their help. He needs the help of the Lord. I'm sorry, my tooth is... Uh, we need the help of the Lord. So we get down on our knees and we start praying and we start asking God once again to come into our lives and help us and make new all these things and restore unto us our finances, restore unto us the bountiful blessings that are accompanied with serving God. But we has ulterior motives because we know that when God comes and God blesses us and gives us, should he give us those things, that we will not be serving him afterwards. We have the mindset that our motives are just for ourselves, and we are so selfish and we are so self-centered that we don't even care about our brothers and sisters, we just want to see whatever our need is, that we flourish. The Bible says it this way, that no man ever hate his own flesh. We always try to take care of ourselves. We always try to be selfish and we try to nourish our own flesh. We try to make sure that we are number one, that we take care of us, and that is it. When we pray, we pray for ourselves. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, do this for me. Do that for me. But the Bible says it this way. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Let him be first. When you get down to pray, talk to God and say, Lord, I need you more today in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. Don't be sitting there just trying to take advantage of the blessings of God, trying to say that, Lord, I need all this, I need all of that, and not even receive the anointing and not even receive the salvation that is accompanied with the blessings of God. Your first and foremost focus should be to serve God and to love Him and to take care of your soul and to make sure that you are honoring the Lord with everything that you do. If you get the blessings of God, he, that is wonderful. He will take care of your needs. He will meet them from the smallest need that you have to the greatest need that you have. He will do that, but don't let that be your motive. Don't let that be the only reason that you get down on your knees and start praying to God once again. Why do we have to go through such hard times in order for us to be able to say, Lord, I need your help? Why can't we just come to God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I recognize my sin, and I need you to save me. I need you to help my family. I need you to help this one. I need you to help this person. I need you to know that I love you more than anything. When's the last time you just got down on your knees and you said, Lord, I love you? That's it. I just want to tell you that I love you, and I'm so grateful, and I'm so thankful for your blessings, Lord. I don't want to ask for anything. I want my motives to be pure. I want my heart to be pure. I want everything inside of me to be pure because I don't want anything to disrupt my relationship with you. I just want you to know that I love you. We are so poisoned by the things of this world that we think that we when we get down to pray or that when we talk to God that all we have to do is think about material possessions, uh, things of this world, money, 
greed. I could go on forever about that one, but different things that we need just to be able to get by in life. And and we sit there and we all we think about is our own selves. How do I need to be blessed today? Lord, how am I going to be blessed today? What are you going to do for me? What is it with that we stop and we say, Lord, what is it I can do for you, Lord? What is it that I can do to help further the kingdom of heaven, to help see people saved? What can I do for my brother and sister? What can I do to make a difference in this world and not just for the point of recognition, but to the point to know that people are going to be touched, people are going to be ministered to, the deaf will hear again, the blind will see, people that are lame will be ministered to and will walk up and reach. Let me tell you something. The people that need God the most aren't the people in the ditches. Aren't the people that are going through the trials. Listen to what I'm telling you right here. If you don't get anything else, get this. The people that need God the most aren't the people that we think are in the trials or going through the fire. They're the people that are sitting on top of the world, so to speak, that thinks everything's going good because they don't recognize that they are hurt. They don't recognize that their soul is in jeopardy. Until... What, they have a health scare? Then all of a sudden they become religious for a week and then they go back to living their life of sin. Lord, I'll do this if you just bring me through this health scare. Lord, if you heal my body, I'll take, I'll do this, I'll do that. I'll be at church on Sunday. I'll do whatever you want, Lord. I'll pay my tithes. I'll do whatever. Listen to me. Don't make a deal with the Lord you can't keep. If you're going to sit back and you're going to make a promise to God, you better be willing to fulfill that promise to God. What are your motives when you pray? Are you just so selfish that we have no other intention but just to feed our own soul, to make sure that we're okay, to make sure that we've got food, to make sure that we're taken care of? I've never once worried about food, as you can tell, because, you know, I'm kind of a Humpty Dumpty, but I've never worried about food, because I always knew that God was going to take care of me. I knew that God was going to meet my needs. I just never did worry about it. I never thought about it. I didn't sit there and fret and say, where's my next meal coming from? I didn't have to even go to the store or, you know, God always made a way. Just like even uh, with, uh, I needed a bed, and um, I didn't have the bed frame or the box spring. I just had the mattress. And in a two-day period, I got a bed frame and a box spring, both free, courtesy of my Lord. I didn't pray over it. I didn't ask God for it. I just believed that God was going to do it. And he did. He constantly surprises me. I mean, it's not like I was sitting there saying, I know that God will, you know, do it anyway, so I'm not going to even bother to talk to him. No, I just, I knew that whatever happened would happen, and whether it was a blessing from God and it came through or it didn't come through, I'm going to serve God anyway. There's been many times that I personally have had the devil come to me and say, you know, this life you're living ain't worth living anymore. You know, it ain't worth serving God anymore. It ain't worth even trying to get up and preach anymore. It ain't even worth ministering anymore. You're too old, you know, you're crippled in your body, and blah, 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 all these different things. People don't want to hear how you preach it. But then I think, Lord, I'm, I've come too far to turn back. I, I can't do that. I have to serve God. I have to go forward. I have to move. I have to 
not be able to stand still. I, I look back and I think about all the stuff I did in the past. I think about all that sin and all these different things that I, I, I engaged in. There's no way I can go back to that. I can't live that life. The Lord saved me. He took me from something that was broken and battered and brought me up. And I want to say my motives are pure when I get down to pray. Not that, you know, I'm anything. It's just because I know what it's like to be on the other end of the, of the salvation, so to speak. I know what it's like to be lost and not found. You know, because I didn't want to be found. I was running. And I'm ashamed of that, but it gave me a greater appreciation for where I'm at today. I hope and pray that every time I get down, my motives are pure. That it's not just me trying to sit there and say, Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. Lord, give me this. Lord, do this for me. Lord, make it this happen. Make this happen. Lord, make that happen. No. I want to just know that my soul is all right, and I want to make sure that I love the Lord thy God. Why? Why do we love the Lord thy God? There are a lot of people that will sit there and tell you that this world came from different things, and everyone is free to believe whatever they want. But I truly believe, and I know, because I know what the Bible says, I know what God has told me, I know what God put inside of my heart, I know what I feel every time I get down to pray, I know that God is real, I know that the Bible says that God spoke it and it came true. I walk outside and I see the different animals running about. I see all these different things that God has created, that God has done in this lifetime. And the things that he's doing still. There are a lot of people that will tell you a lot of different things. That the world is comes from a lot of different places. But God spoke it and that's it. Bang. Now, that's why we love the Lord thy God. Because He wouldn't. we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have a life if it wasn't for the Lord thy God. We wouldn't have a soul. We wouldn't have an opportunity to serve him. We wouldn't have anything without Jesus Christ. We would be going to hell with no chance of redemption without Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's why we serve him. We serve him because he's done us nothing but good. We serve him because he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We serve Him because He has done everything for us. But as the three men in the midst of the fire furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, But if not, but if my God doesn't supply all my needs, but if God doesn't deliver me out of this fiery furnace, I'm still going to serve Him. I'm going to die going to heaven. And I'm going to know that my soul is saved to the utmost. Can you say that today? Can you say that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven? That I know that my soul is saved to the utmost? Love the Lord thy God. Make sure your motives are pure. Make sure that your intentions are pure. Make sure that when you serve God, and you get down to pray, that it's not just you trying to manipulate God, but that your motives are whole and your motives are clean. That way when you get back up, you can go about and say, Lord, I just want you. I don't need anything else. If I just have you, Lord, it's enough. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. Lord, I pray that you would bless this ministry not because it's me but Lord because I know that you want to do great and wonderful things Lord I know that you're wanting to 
see people saved and moved upon, ministered to, healed. But you said you chose the men to preach the gospel. Help us to be obedient, Lord. God, minister unto us today. Lord, that we may prove that our motives are nothing but pure and right as rain. Lord, that we may know that when we serve you, God, that there is no blemish, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Lord, if there's one out there that's never known you, Lord, I pray that he would fall down upon his knees and he would pray this prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. And I pray that you would touch me. Lord, I, I need your move. I need you to move upon me. Lord, I confess that you're Jesus Christ, that you came to earth in, of a man. As a man, you died upon a cross for my sins and rose again the third day. I believe it and I confess it with my mouth. And the Bible says that I'm saved. I need you to make me whole, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I love each and every one of you. Let the word of the Lord minister unto your heart and souls today. God bless you. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. Share this message. Help spread the ministry. Help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for bearing with me in my speech issue right now with my tooth. And uh, I love you. Make sure your motives are pure. And remember... All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord anytime, anyplace, and he is right there for you.